Hello, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Welcome to my stream. I'm George. Uh, you may know me as uh, Golkero in various uh, forums, Amiga forums. Let me fix a little bit this camera. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to my stream. Uh, this is Friday, yeah, and uh, here in Ireland is a very uh, nice weekend, the one that uh, we are going to have. Uh, because uh, this Sunday is uh, St. Patrick's uh, festives and uh, we are going to have a great, great time in Ireland. So, um, thank you for being here. Uh, we are going to have, a, I hope, a very nice um, uh, stream today because we, I'm, I'm really excited because I'm going to uh, show you uh, some new stuff we are going to to work with this uh, Amiga 1200 and uh, we are going to um, pump it up uh, a little bit so not a little bit actually we are going to pump it up a lot uh, if you have seen the title of this stream we are going to play with a pie storm and um, since this is my first time that I deal with any kind of accelerator based on Raspberry Pis and all this stuff. It's going to be uh, something new for me and I hope that is going to be useful for you as well. So uh, I would like to welcome everyone in the chat. Uh, Amikit, welcome to the stream. Average silly guy. Um, Smartcooks, welcome. Star Slayer, welcome to the stream. Uh, Javier, welcome. Uh, I'm glad you are all here and uh, I hope that you are going to enjoy it. Uh, thank you, Javier. Thank you for, uh, I'm glad that I am back. And I hope that uh, this um, new, um, uh, let's say year for me on streaming again, it's going to last a long time because I have a lot of stuff to, to show you. Um, but uh, for today, I'm going to, to have um, and discuss with you about the PyStorm. I don't know how many of you are using a PyStorm on any of their Amiga. What is your opinion on that? Feel free to, to share your ideas and uh, your opinion on, your, on the chat and we can have a discuss. Um, I, I'm not sure my feelings about PyStorm and having a... Welcome, Aris. Welcome to the stream. I... I at First, I didn't like the idea of having a, a, a Raspberry Pi inside the Amiga and um, uh, I was thinking that if I need to use a Raspberry Pi, why don't use it as an emulated Amiga which works fine. Uh, if you try and set up Amiberry on that, it's uh, great, you can have that uh, loading instantly, but then with the uh, speed that um, the uh, PyStorm and the MU68 uh, gives to a classic Amiga like this one or a 500 or whatever, I think I, I might change my mind. So um, I purchased one a, a couple of months ago back in uh, Amiga Ireland, the event. Uh, I purchased one and uh, since then I was having that sitting uh, on my desk and uh, doing nothing with that because I always wanted to start doing something on the stream and since the stream started it's time to uh, dive into uh, the Pi Store. Uh, I haven't done anything today with it uh, other than finding the what is uh, the minimum things that I need to, to use. Uh, this um, uh, Amiga 1200 I'm going to show you inside is uh, a bare Amiga and as you may see here it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have it doesn't even have um, a drive. Uh, the ROMs are uh, 3.0, so it's uh, 
pretty bare Amiga uh, to work with. The only thing that is newer is the keyboard membrane that I uh, changed uh, a few uh, months ago. Um, so that's the only thing we have. So this Amiga is going to uh, get a Pi Storm inside. Actually, it is also the Reversion 1D1. Uh, so I'm not sure even if PyStorm has issues with that revision. And uh, that Amiga also needs some uh, recapping because I haven't done any of that uh, yet to this motherboard. And at some point in the future, I'm planning to, to do it, which uh, it's funny because I already bought the, the capacitors months ago. I have them sitting there. At some point, I'm going to do the recapping and keep that Amiga as uh, new as possible. New. Uh, you know what I mean. Uh, healthy. Let's say healthy as possible. So I'm going to put it uh, at the side. And I'm going to um, have a look on the Pi Store. Uh, I'm sure you have seen a lot of um, videos online about the Python, how you can set it up and all this stuff. It's not that tricky and uh, I hope to do it uh, right. So this is the Pi Storm and I have here um, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus which I'm going to strip down because I was using that as a, um, a little server in my home but it was not uh, that uh, useful in the end. So um, I moved everything from that to another machine and uh, I freed it up to, to use it in the Pi Storm inside the Amiga. So this is the Raspberry Pi. Let me put this uh, closer at the side. And as you can see here, I have still the heatsink for the uh, CPU here. So I need this to be removed and I hope that I'm not going to break it. But before I do that, I will try to uh, soak it with a little bit of uh, IPA here and see that if that helps at all. because, you know, this um, sticky um, membrane that it has under the heat sink is not easy to, to remove it. Let me find a tool, something. So for these streams, we are going to, to do, uh, in, in case you, you missed the previous one, we are going to do some um, work with uh, hardware, but uh, don't expect me to, to do any uh, thing like um, uh, recapping or something like that. I'm not an expert on this stuff, although that I have done that in many Amigas of my own. Um, I find it quite um, tiring and um, uh, it needs a lot of concentration from my side. So uh, I, I am not sure if I'm able to do it on, on stream live. Uh, hello, SLD Snake. Hello, welcome to the stream. No, no, you are not late. You are fine. We just started, so we are going. Uh, what I'm trying to do is, um, I removed the old heat sink from the Raspberry Pi, so I'm trying to clean it up here. Uh, let me find some something to to uh, clean it. Yeah, that works fine. So the the streams and what I'm doing is not a guide for you to to go and do what I, what I am doing. It's not. I'm just showing what I do, but it's not a guide for you to follow um, because I might do uh, stupid things, right? So please don't follow what I'm doing with my machines. Most probably I'm going to burn them out, down. So. We will see how it goes. Uh, 
as you can see it cleared quite well the whatever the um, heatsink had underneath and let's see the next steps so I have seen a lot of um, videos uh, months ago when uh, the Pystorm was released and all this stuff and uh, I will try to do what I have seen but if I do something stupid please let me know um, has anyone uh, a Pystorm running on their machine and what is your opinion on that? how do you find it? So if I'm not wrong, this header here needs to go to the header of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I guess it's going something like that. I guess, yeah. And before we do that, we need to put this small um, membrane that will it is for the heatsink. I guess for the heat uh, like that here or maybe above the CPU like that yeah okay and let me cool Average chill guy says I trust you, but uh, I don't have an Amiga. I got a Pi 3 though. Yep, yeah, yeah. The I find the Pi's quite interesting as a hardware. Um, I was not happy with the. You know the the thing is. I have uh, the classic uh, Amiga, so. For my uh, classic, uh, for me playing with uh, classic Amigas, it's just uh, get the Amiga and uh, connect it and then uh, start using it. So uh, the emulation, although I use it, I use it mostly for um, development purposes and testing before I go and test on my classic real uh, system. Um, Although that I find all the, sorry, not from this side, but from this side. Yes, I find all the uh, distributions, the Amiga OS distributions that are uh, targeting uh, the emulated Amigas quite fascinating. And um, I believe that if someone doesn't have an Amiga, the best alternative solution is to go with a Raspberry Pi because it is uh, small uh, it doesn't uh, uh, have any any uh, issues you have a very specific uh, hardware there that you know that always will work and you are not going to have any issues and yeah uh, welcome C2 welcome the stream SLD Snake says I bought it for the 1200 a year ago, more or less, but I sold it months later. I have a Warp 1260, okay. So I prefer that original metal at its maximum classic performance. Yeah, yeah. I moved the Pi Storm idea for a new uh, A600 that I have. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, the Pi Storm, if you don't have a, a, a classic accelerator, for me, the Pi Storm is a, a very uh, good solution uh, for um, uh, its money. I mean, for the cost that you are getting, you are making a great uh, accelerator for uh, any Amiga. So, either if it is a, a 500 or a 600 or a 1200, the, the performance that you are getting based on what I have seen. I have never tested. So this is my first. So yeah, the performance you get is tremendous. So I think it is a very good solution if you don't have any other uh, solution. Otherwise, going with a 1260 like you did, 
they work 1260 only the if you if you uh, count the cost of the only the cpu it's two times higher than the this solution right I said the snake says uh, yes the move uh, from a 1200 stock it's uh, an awesome also the price it's okay yeah yeah it is okay I don't know how stable these are uh, because I haven't used any uh, at all so I'm pretty curious to see how how stable it is for me if you if you care to to play games only uh, and listen some uh, mod uh, music or uh, simple stuff like that for me the 1200 that i have with the blizzard 1230 is awesome it has a great uh, level of uh, uh, compatibility almost with everything is uh, running on 50 megahertz it has an fpu and it's great of course if you need to to have uh, to, to to visit websites or um even watch any kind of video it's not a, a proper machine to do that with the pystorm i think that is uh, sold and there is a way to to have everything uh, running much faster get uh, an rtg uh, screen right um, with a high resolution and things like that and also being able to to play video uh, and th which is also very cool so uh, as you may see i don't know if it is visible yep the pi storm the sorry the raspberry pi connects from this side of the pi storm and i have put three uh, uh, screws here that uh, screw on these holes from underneath and here is the header so things that you have seen in many videos but i'd like to, to show you that here and have a discussion so this is the accelerator now it has also this protective uh, film that you need to put on this side to avoid a uh, connection with the the keyboard keyboard underneath so let me add that as well and then we are going to go to the software side and how we can uh, have the uh, Raspberry Pi set up for uh, being a 68,000 CPU, right? So I guess you need to put it like that. Okay, doesn't stick so hard, but let me push it cool i will leave this paper on doesn't bother me so there are uh, as as much as i understand and based on the investigation that i did on uh, pi storms there are two solutions to emulate 68k on the pi storm uh, the mu 68 and there is one more uh, called Musashi, I think. The MU68 is the faster uh, on emulation, but for now it doesn't support the USB ports and it doesn't support the LAN port. So you can't have uh, internet from the LAN uh, connection and you can't use the USB ports but it uses the hdmi uh, port to and uh, you can get uh, also um, uh, rtg output from that uh, port the musashi though which is slower uh, is able to use the usb and the lan part and if i'm not wrong please correct me uh, it is also able to use the wireless connection from the the wi-fi connection from the raspberry pi but i'm not 100 percent sure on that now the development that i'm looking forward to to see is uh, because if you set it up everything fine with the uh, pi storm you are going to get the uh, output the rtg output from the hdmi 
but the native resolutions and the native output from the Amiga is not possible yet to get it from the same output. Which means that uh, you are forced to have uh, two monitors or uh, uh, one monitor that is able to switch between uh, two inputs. Uh, and you are also forced to have uh, the uh, RGB video out from the Amiga connected to your monitor so to see only the uh, native Amiga out, uh, screens. Am I right? What do you think? So the team that is working on uh, the Pi stores right now, they have a solution but this is still in development where they are going to get uh, they are going to provide a, a small uh, board that connects in the Amiga and um, over some of uh, some of the uh, chips or one of the chips and uh, this is going to be connected into this connector here which is the video connector if they this is used from the for uh, raspberry pis to connect uh, cameras uh, if you want to connect a camera on your raspberry pi and uh, you know use it to uh, record video or anything this is the the port that is used and the solution that they have is to use that port for driving the native uh, Amiga resolutions through the Raspberry Pi which is brilliant and uh, I'm looking forward for that now it might not be this one but this one I'm, I'm not sure which of the two I think it's this one for the camera I'm not sure. So uh, now we have the accelerator ready. Here we have the the SD port for the accelerator, and there we are going to to use an, a small SD card to install the uh, MU68, which I choose because it is the fastest out there, and um, also this SD card will host the uh, hard disk for the Amiga side. It is right now a 32 gigabyte uh, card and we it's time to, to start uh, setting, uh, setting it up. Let's see how it goes. Let's see. So uh, for me to do that I need something to connect the SD card to the Amiga. Please give me a sec and I'll be right back. I'm here again. Didn't take too much. So um, USB, the SDK, the sorry, the SD um, card in the USB. And while we are doing all this stuff, let me put some uh, music. If and tell me, please tell me if it is too loud or not.
No, the, the music is not the Windows uh, sound. So... How is it? Is it too loud? SLD Snake says that uh, the video mix using the camera port is a good idea. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Cool. Okay, so uh, for you to, to have uh, a clear view uh, of what I am doing, let me switch my screens here. We are playing some music from the abim.net, uh, the mo uh, mods uh, jukebox. So the URL is mods.abime.net It's a great uh, website because it has a lot of uh, music in mods and I always choose it uh, to listen some music The music is a, a bit louder than your voice but it's fine Okay, let me put it a little bit lower And I hope now it's much better So. If you need to set up the uh, Raspberry Pi and the Pi Storm, you need the MU68. This has all the information, all the files that uh, uh, needs for the Raspberry Pi to become a 68K uh, uh, CPU and uh, this Pi Storm to become the accelerator, right? So you need to download, let's see, uh, these uh, from the releases and let me make it a little bit bigger from the releases here you need to go and download the latest version which is the 1.0 release candidate 3 and we need this uh, zip file from here and that we are going to save it on the desktop and we are going to delete with it later so uh, to see how you are going to set up everything uh, okay let me uh, how about now smart cooks is it better so to set up everything uh, there is some documentation in this repository of the MU68 if you go to the uh, first uh, screen there is a folder here that says docs and inside that there is tutorials and here it has SD preparation which is for the SD the micro SD okay that we are going to use um, so what we need to do is to allocate a, a partition uh, to create a partition this uh, micro SD that has the FAT32 uh, file system it is formatted with FAT32 and this is going to uh, host all the files for the MU68 and then the rest of the, part, uh, the, the space that this SD card has we are going to allocate it for the Amiga let's see how we can do it so I'm going to keep that window at the side and we are going to open the where is it? Computer management tool, disk management. Okay. Let me see. No, I'm not usually use these uh, windows except for the uh, streams and sometimes for gaming. So the SD card that I use is a 32 gigabytes uh, SD card. So this is the one that we have. That's the disk three to be sure let me remove it and this is removed 
Okay, so we are sure that this is the one. And uh, we have here uh, ignore those errors because it doesn't understand the uh, the file system of the partitions that are already there. Let me see if I can remove them. Okay. Delete this volume. And the first boot uh, is already FAT32, is 256 megabytes. I will keep it like it is, but I will uh, format it so it ha doesn't have anything in there. It's empty. And uh, since this is done, if we open now the boot partition, it is empty and in this partition we need to put the MU68 uh, file that we downloaded, all the files from this uh, MU68. So what I'm trying to do is to... No. Extract files. to the boot partition. Okay, thank you. We need to move them to the root and not inside um, a folder. Okay, and removing the folder. Now, the other thing that we need, if we, you, we open the config.txt uh, file in a text editor like this one, at the bottom you will see that it has this command in it ramfs kick.rom. This is the file name of the kickstart that is uh, needed to, to use on the um, with the, the PyStorm. Now, if you remember, my uh, Amiga has a Kickstart 3.0 and uh, this is something that we don't care because we are going to override it with uh, a newer version if we need. Let me have a look in the chat. OP, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Is it a Pi 3 you have there? Yes, it is a Pi 3 uh, B plus. SLD Snake says it's interesting to have some free space in the FAT32 uh, partition since you can use it later as a partition to copy files easily between the Amiga and the other OSs. Okay, yeah, I think 256 um, megabytes are pretty enough since those files are barely 8 megabytes. And if we add the... Uh, Sorry, the, the ROM, it's not going to get even bigger than that. I mean, it's going to get bigger, <laughs> but not too much, since the ROM is only 512 uh, kilobytes. So, from the... I plan to install on my Amiga, the Amiga OS 3.2, and uh, so I need the ROM, the latest ROM that is released, which came with the update 3.2.1, is the I think it is the A twelve hundred seventy point one zero two. So I'm going to copy that in this uh, partition, 
and I will rename it to kick.rom because if you remember in the config file that's the name that it looks for of course you could change the name in, in this file right but let's keep it uh, the default because as I said earlier this is the first time that I'm doing something like that so let's go by the book Uh, I have seen, uh, OP says that uh, you have seen uh, people selling uh, Pystorms with PyCM4 on that, yes. Yeah, I, I don't know why, if this is a complete failure, but I think the CM4 is uh, even better than the having these huge headers inside your, uh, your Amiga and all the stuff, because it is pretty slim. I liked it a lot. And the connections that you can drive from that board to the uh, at the back of the Amiga that's, uh, are pretty neat. Uh, but for now, I will start with that, and we will see. We will see if at any point in the future I'm going to get the CM4 or not. This uh, Raspberry Pi I had it, so it's better to use things that you have, right? So, uh, as much as I understand, we are done with this uh, partition and you don't need to do anything else. Now, you remember we have another uh, partition, another free space, a lot of free space, um, that we need to use for the, uh, from the Amiga side, right? So, but this needs some, some work, some extra work. So we have uh, almost 30 uh, gigabytes of uh, space, which we can uh, follow the uh, guide here that says to allocate it as a new symbol uh, volume. And let's use everything. And here, It says in the dialog window, do not assign a letter to that volume, otherwise Windows will prompt you to format it later. On some systems, you will be forced to assign the driver letter. In that case, do not initial initialize partition after it is created. Okay, so since we are forced, because as you can see, the do not assign a drive letter is uh, ghosted, so I can't do otherwise and I will choose to not format this volume so I expect here now it tries to open that volume right and it fails because the file system is not something that it knows so I will choose cancel okay and that is fine SLD Snake says the CM4 it's a, it's a beast that uh, they overclock it using a simple but bigger heatsink plus fan and boom. Boom? You mean boom the, the, the whole Amiga gets a boom? <laughs> because that's, that's crazy. But yeah, I think the, because the, of the extra speed that the CM4 has and the performance that it gives, yeah, probably the... Uh, the internal uh, heat it's much bigger right so uh, from my side let's see that we need it <laughs> and then we can upgrade because this uh, kind of hardware is available and um, it's not something that is going to uh, go away soon i guess and i hope <laughs> So the, we have this partition ready and now as the guide says, we have to do the dangerous part. So let's, let's get a little bit dangerous. <laughs> so the, the thing, what we need is to open the uh, command uh, prompt. Uh, command prompt. This one as administrators. And the reason for that is that we are going to play with the partitions, right? So that's why we need to go as administrators. Let me close the disk manager. 
Right. SLD Snakes has a good boom, a, a nice speed up, yeah, absolutely. But they managed to keep the CM4 CPU at 46 degrees. Okay, not bad. It's not bad. Absolutely not bad. Okay, 46. Wow, that's that's great actually. So what we need to start here is the disk part. Cool, that was easy. And we see here the prompt of the disk part. You may remember from computer management that the micro SD card was called disk one there. Now let's make sure disk part agrees on that. Okay, so we need to do list disk. And for me, the uh, micro SD is the disk three. Okay, select disk, select disk for me is three. The third one okay let's go with that and after that we can do a list part which are going is going to give us the partitions great so far so good select part two okay because that's the second partition that i want to set up and finally setting the type will be done with command set as following set id equals to 76 cool done now you know why this tool is so dangerous it assumes that you really know what you are doing and it will apply the changes without asking for any confirmation perfect so be warned and make sure you really know what you are doing and that's all we, you need to do as much as i understand we copied all the let me exit that is there an exit yep so we copied everything in the the, the mu68 files in the boot partition we uh, set up the uh, the rom i think we are good to go we are going to keep this uh, guide because it has information on how to set up the uh, partitions on the amiga and the the thing that i care mostly is to remember this SCSI device because if you don't change the SCSI device uh, the amiga is not going to be able to see the micro sd so what i need to do now is to eject the flash disk the sd card and move it to my raspberry pi falcon 11 welcome glad you're here how are you doing uh, sld snake says partition type 76 it reminds me of the old amethlon days exactly exactly that's uh, that's accurate uh, by the way, have I tell you uh, I got two Z Oh my god, uh, OP, Patrick, oh my god. How many computers are, uh, do you have right now? SLD Snake says, uh, yes, the device name is a bit tricky. It is. I'm glad, uh, Falcon, that everything is okay on your side. Uh, thank you for being here. So, it's time for the Amiga. Let me bring it on the desk. Now, because the Amiga is bare minimum, it doesn't have anything inside. Uh, I have to get output uh, to the capture card, right? So, for me to do that, I have this uh, scan doubler. Uh, and uh, flicker fixer this is quite old and the output works but uh, you will see that the screen is not that clear maybe it needs some um, fixes inside maybe some kind of capacitors are not that well so i'm going to use this one for now because 
even if we put inside the uh, PyStorm, the output that we are going to get is from the RGB, from the Amiga, right? Because uh, we are using the native uh, resolutions. Falcon 11 says, I see you prepare. Yeah, 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 yeah. The SD card for the PyStorm, yes. We are going to install it today and if we have time also start doing the um, installation of Amiga OS 3.2 OP says too many if you ask a man <laughs> I have three A1200 great great stuff I love the 1200s I think it's my beloved uh, system from all the the classic Amiga so for this um, system here I think I showed you before I'm using this um, uh, power supplier which is for Amiga 500, 500 plus, 600, 1200 and gives a lot of juice so I don't think that I'm going to have any issues with the PyStorm when it's going to be connected I use that with the Blizzard 1230 and it works great So from that power supply, I'm going to get this cable and get that connected. Great. That worked. Last but not least, I have this converter for the mouse. Uh, this is the Rice MK2. Great converter with a... Um, a wireless uh, dongle here which works and it is perfect for my situation you probably will uh, s s what we need now is because this Amiga doesn't have any uh, drive in there and I don't have any uh, discs <laughs> to use we are going to use that um, Gotek external Gotek which can be used to, to boot to uh, images of uh, the file system, the sorry, the operating system that I have in just a simple uh, USB. So let me connect this one as well. And I think we are almost ready. The cable management here is freaking. <laughs> uh, Amikit says, I need to send you Amikit card for PyStorm. Yep, yeah. I think I have one. I think you gave me one uh, when I met you at the Amiga 38, but I have to check this out. If I don't, and you are kind enough to, to send me one, I will install it on, on stream and see how it goes. SLT Snake says, the PyStorm can be tricky with the 5 volt line from the PSU. Okay, let's see. Let's see how it goes. I, if it doesn't work quite well, I have a, another um, power supplier that I use with my uh, Blizzard PPC and the B-Vision and that works great with that uh, system. Uh, so I probably I have a solution for that. OP says I like the A500 more. I have a Fracken, <laughs> Frankenstein uh, 500 that have uh, a Revision 6 motherboard and the Space Invaders mechanical keyboard and the Spitfire 500 it's just a nice gaming setup cool cool do you use it do you have time or you play with this, the Spectrums come on Falcon Level says ADFs yeah this um, Gotek uh, uses ADFs so it's perfect uh, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, SLD Snake. It is very nice because it it has the uh, outside is 3D printed, but it's quite good 3D printed. You can see here, even the connector is plastic and 3D printed. Perfect. It is quite small. If you compare it with the <laughs> USB that I use. It's almost like the, the size of the USB and uh, it's pretty fast, it's pretty good. 
I like it a lot. Okay, Ian, I will let you know about the uh, Ami kit. I'd love to, to run it on the PyStorm and see how it goes. Uh, OP says, yes, I have some time, some time. Get rid of the Spectrums. Amiga can uh, emulate Spectrum, just fine. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, Falcon 11 says, nice and small gothic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, let me see if we can ruin this Amiga. Let me, I think we are fine. I will give it some power. Great. Let me switch and see if you get something on the output. You might see some artifacts here and there. It's because this scan doubler is not new anymore like you see I found that if you tap some at the back it gets better when it warms up it gets a little better but you see the the output is uh, absolutely horrible so let's see if we can uh, do anything with the Gotek. Okay, I'm choosing the install 3.2. Okay, and if I reboot, let's see if it boots automatically if I, or I need to double click. Remember, this uh, system has um, Kickstart 3.0, right? And I believe that we are going to be able to boot from the external uh, drive okay boot options we see only yeah let's see the bf1 okay boot amikit say uh, op says to amikit that uh, the amikit is working great on his 1200 with the ice drake Cool. Nice, nice, very nice. And uh, the okay, Falcon. I'm looking forward to test it. Yeah, absolutely. So we have screen. Now this might be cut beneath uh, from at the bottom because i use the uh, scan doubler and i use also a upscaler to have that in a bigger uh, resolution so that the capture card can capture it it's a whole mess of cabling here you don't see it <laughs> but trust me it's a whole mess so we can boot from uh, the drive that's good i'm going to power it down and Time to put the PyStorm inside. Let's see how it goes. So, I guess it goes... No. It goes here. Let me remove the trapdoor. Like that. Let me see if I can manage to break it. Maybe if I unscrew that here will give us some space. Cool. Wow. 
Okay, that's in. Now that Amiga doesn't have the underneath uh, uh, metallic that the Amiga 1200 has, so it uh, doesn't need any film or anything. Uh, but I'm looking for something like that uh, to, to, to put it and uh, have it complete, as complete as possible. I think this needs to be removed. Yeah, that needs to be to remove because from this side it's more sticky. So I believe that like that it is going to be much better. Like that, yeah, it's going to stay there. Cool. About the trapdoor, we will see later if we are going to need to put it in there. We have the SD in place. Everything is fine, I hope. Let's close that down and see what we get. What I expect here to happen right now is when we power it up, we are going to see the uh, screen from the ROM, but this time it's going to be the 3.2.1, right? I mean, Git, I have the uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in here. Okay, it started automatically booting from the external drive. Let me check that uh, disk completely and reboot it. Uh, Falcon says if I will have uh, more time I won't uh, install Amikit on 600 Python. Cool. Well, you have something like that already set up, right? Uh, is it a, a Python with what kind of uh, uh, Raspberry Pi? Do you have the zero in there? Falcon says uh, Amiga OS 3.2.2.1, yes. Okay, didn't I remove it? Let's see. Amikit says uh, get Pi 4 or CM4 for Amikit testing. It's twice as fast. Okay, cool. As you can see, uh, we have 3.2 ROM, uh, 47.102, the one that uh, we installed in the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, DSD card. So we are good to go. And what I need now is to insert the install 3.2 uh, disk and with that we are going to start uh, setting up the partitions so let's see how it goes okay cool So, as much as I understand right now, the uh, Raspberry Pi and the Pi Storm is working great, which is a good sign. Uh, now it boots from the disk. Let's see how it goes. Um, Falcon 11 says Pi 3. You, you fitted the Pi 3 inside the 600. Nice. <laughs> I, I wouldn't think, I, ca I can't imagine how this is fitted in there. Uh, 
And don't you have any heat issues? It works great. Great. So uh, we put it in install 3.2 and we need to make uh, to, to prepare the uh, hard disk. So because I don't want to uh, write over my system here, I'm going to move the HD toolbox in the RAM disk. And as you can see here, already we have almost 900 of megabytes of RAM. I guess these kind of things, you can set them up in the configuration file. I haven't checked that, uh, but uh, probably you can set it up there. And uh, let me switch to the uh, Windows side and get again the uh, guide here. Okay. And let's see what we can do. So if we go here on this side and do information, perfect. We can go on here. Let me get it a little bit higher. That's right. So here we have to insert BRCM does sdhc dot device and they propose that we have the max address 6 at max lan 20 and i think that this is a um, uh, this can be reduced to zero so that uh, the when when we start the ht toolbox it's not going to scan for too many uh, uh, hard disks to find uh, other hard disks so if we start it now we see two uh, partitions here now the first one is the partition that has to do with the boot it's the boot partition where we uh, copied all the files for the uh, pystorm to work the mu68 to work okay so this Partition should not be touched, otherwise the Pystorm is not going to work anymore. And we have to play with the second uh, partition. Change drive type, define, define new, read configuration, continue. And you see here that we have the 30 gigabyte of space that we reserved for this partition. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. SLD Snake says I have a Pi 3A, it has less height and fits very well. Cool. But uh, the uh, 600, because it doesn't have any AGA support, I guess there is no solution for the PyStorm to support AGA, right? On machines that they don't have it like the vampire does with the saga system i don't know it's my first time with the python so that's why i'm asking so the partition drive let's create an installation partition let's say this one let me remove this one and we have the DH1, uh, DH0. We will make it 300. Uh, file system standard. Now, directory cache is usually used on, uh, is useful on system, uh, on um, when you use um, uh, floppy, uh, floppy disks that's mainly when directory cache was meant to be used 
So for me here, I'm going to choose the long, uh, long names. I will leave the block size 4K. Although that I could reduce it to 1K and have smaller blocks reserved for small files. Otherwise, the problem is that if you have a file that is 2K and the block size is 4, on your SD, on your hard disk, wherever, um, always the minimum uh, size that on blocks uh, that is going to be reserved are going to be 4K. That's how I understand it. I might be wrong. Please write me down on the on the in the chat that I'm doing wrong and how we can uh, how it uh, works actually. Uh, Falcon says yes, you are right. No aga, but RTG yes. Cool. Uh, SLD Snake says, I saw a little trick for the non-AGA systems. You have so much power, so it seems that you can use the UI for 68K. <laughs> wow, the one that it's available for Amithlon or Morphos and run a UI inside the classic Amiga. Wow, that's great. That's funny, but great. <laughs> yeah, 2K file use all 4K uh, blocks. So, because the Amiga and the file system and the, sorry, not the file system, but the files that you, we mostly use and have are quite small. They are not always less than 4K, but um, I think I'm going to try to select here. Now, from the other side, there is a myth, I, I am not sure yet. Uh, that all the SD or SSD cards have to have always 4K uh, block size because no matter what you are going to choose they are going to reserve always 4K because that's how they are built uh, so I'm not sure, what do you say guys? SLD Snake says, uh, I think it's like that 2K file, waste space. Yeah, because it, it is waste space with 4K blocks. Yeah, because it is 2K file, but it also re reserves the rest of the block. So it stays empty and that's a waste of space. But if I'm not mistaken, the cards works best at low level using 4K blocks, not 100% sure. Okay. Okay, so let's leave it like that, 4K. And this is bootable. So that means that if we try to reboot our Amiga before we start the installation, we, before we finish the installation, the Amiga will start, uh, try to, to boot from this partition. That's why I'm going to uh, disable that, because I think if I'm not completely lost, we are going to need to reboot so to initialize that partition. So I am going to disable the bootable now and click OK, save changes to drive, exit and reboot. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, this kind, this thing of, with the blocks always confuses me because some people say ah, if you have an SSD it doesn't matter, always you are going to use 4K blocks because that's how the SSDs are made. Others say that uh, no, the SSD support uh, smaller block size. I'm not sure. And the SD cards is like an SSD, right? It's a memory uh, card. So, yeah. So this is okay. Let's see how it goes. And now we have the, the process, maybe a little bit uh, uh, boring process of uh, installing uh, the uh, operating system, right? 
but at least we have a Gotek. It's going to get a little bit faster. Let me format this uh, partition. I usually like to, to name them system and don't put Rascan, fast file system, log file names, quick format. Okay, cool. Now let me have a look if I have anything. I don't remember if in the Gotek I have a sysin for something like that. It has a very, a very small um, screen here, which is really useful. Okay. And you also can have uh, folders and thing, uh, to, to organize anything you want. No. Oh, yeah, let's see. Okay, yes, I have something here, let's see, we have plenty of memory, so we might be, it might be possible to have a, let's say, copied, I think the, uh, let's go with the 68k, but I think the PyStorm the default configuration is to emulate a 68040, if I'm not wrong, so I could run this version, but let's go with this, the, the generic one, and also let's copy this in RAM. Okay. Uh, Let me okay. Cool. So if we go to RAM and we do dir and if we do LHA underscore sixty eight K X info underscore great worked great and if we go here Okay, so it's sysin for 4.4, right, here, uh, it sys like a 68040 with the FPU and it sys an uh, MMU, that's awesome, uh, the classic test for the speed. OP, you are right, that's a lot of RAM. <laughs> Thanks Falcon, yeah, 040, great, great. So you see how fast it is. Uh, do we need the CM4 on that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, probably we do. Uh, I don't know, I mean, if you need to play uh, demos and uh, games, I believe this speed is pretty fine. Uh, but I, I guess if you want to see, to watch uh, videos, especially if that is higher resolution than all the stuff, 
you need more speed maybe i haven't tried that yet yet we will see and the drive see if we check the dh0 Oh, sorry, it reads from DF1. I haven't selected the DH0. Let's see the DF1, the speed of the Gotek. Okay. Now, I don't know how much caching is there, so but it, it seems it has uh, 20 megabytes uh, per second, which is extreme cool so it sees all the boards anything memory 748 megabytes 112 megabytes and the two megabytes of cipram cool so it is ready time for the installation it works fine uh, as we have seen the the whole process is not that difficult right uh, even someone like me can can install so it's it's great it's great so uh, we have the partition ready we need to start the installation unfortunately because i don't have the drivers ready for an external uh, pcmca cd-rom i can't use that and uh, let's start with installation from the drive from the Gotek, changing disks one by one my plan uh, op is to to install 3.2 yes that's my plan So we select the partition which is the system, English and Greek, we don't need any of them. I will keep the postscript, you never know. And from all this, I'm going to keep this one. Do you want to install Glow icons? Of course, and let's see the, the installation process. Yep, yeah, uh, oh, hello Irla, hello Amiga Ireland. I'm jealous of how tidy your cables are, George. You don't see behind the, 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 the monitor. If I, if I get a little bit of the camera here, it's a mess, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, because the uh, to have the screen uh, online so that you can see what happens I need a converter from the uh, VGA output to the to an HDMI which goes to an upscaler from there I'm going to a switch and from so because I need to, to switch between my Amiga and the PC and then uh, from there an HDMI goes to the capture card from the capture card an HDMI goes to it's it's a mess it's a mess so I need the Amiga workbench but I <laughs> as you have seen uh, it's like I managed to hide them behind the the monitor quite well and it seems so clean here it's perfect <laughs> Under the rug, hide things under the rug. But it's working. And if that uh, flicker fixer uh, was working much better, the screen will be crystal clear. Although on your screen, I think it's it looks okay. On my screen is horrible. <laughs> Hide cables, yes, yes, Falcon. <laughs> it's always like that. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you remember when I uh, was doing the streams about the Morphos, the system that I used. Um, 
because the power book uh, that I used has a weird uh, resolution I needed to, to connect an upscaler just to manage to get that screen uh, from the capture card otherwise it was not working at all so all the, I always have uh, cables here and there now uh, I'm planning to, to order some small cables much smaller like uh, 50 centimeters or something to to not have long cables trying to to, to fit all everything in there Amiga Ireland says these are the power user tips. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, power user th tips. Yeah, if you if you uh, want to um, uh, stream multiple different systems, you need to have everything uh, set up. But if you have them always on your desk, you're not going to have any space on your desk. You need a huge desk afterwards. OP says I have a 1200 with a TF1260, good. I'm using both AGS 2.5 and Amiga OS 3.2 on it. It's nice to be able to choose what drive to start from. Exactly. And there are um, some uh, software uh, on Aminet, there is some software on Aminet, if you, if you search about that, that are quite helpful on this part because if you boot and you keep uh, the right mouse button uh, pressed down, it will boot from one partition. If you keep the left uh, mouse button pressed, it will, boot, it will boot from the other partition. So you can somehow select uh, while it, it boots where exactly you want to go. And that in situations like that is quite useful for me because I don't use AGS and I don't use any other um, any similar um, launcher for uh, for games. I'm always using the iGame. Um, I need to to always boot into the OS for that. Uh, oh, you 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 use you you are saying OP that you are using both mouse buttons. Yeah, um, the solution that I told you uh, requires some changes in your startup sequence at the top of your startup sequence to load that uh, software, that utility. And based on what mouse button you use, you keep pressed, it uh, boots from the partition. Of course, you have to remember that the left mouse button, the left mouse button is for partition one, the right is partition two or something like that. But there are uh, solutions like that. I think I saw that the... There are some distributions or something like the AGS that gives you a menu when you boot and you press what exactly you want to boot. Which is or it was the bootloader that the guys from the Apollo, the Vampire, are uh, built. I'm, I don't remember quite well right now. I think that's the Apollo boot that has a menu and you are able to select what exactly you want to boot. But I don't know if that relies on the Vampire. And uh, that's also a good uh, solution you have a menu there you click on what you want to boot boom it works uh, if you like scripting you might be able to b build something like that as well uh, i don't know how difficult it is or not but this could be possible Otherwise, you could um, nah, yeah. I guess you are booting uh, the OS 3.2 to use it as the operating system and do stuff in there, right? Yeah. Uh, 
I think if you boot AGS by default, there is an option to return to the operating system. So this might be also useful as a good solution. So to avoid having the early boot startup and all the stuff. OP says, yes, you have a menu, but it's only working on the uh, V4 Vampires. I'm using it on my eyes trick. Okay, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, what I will do is, um, if I were you, I would boot always into AGS and then select the option to shut down the AGS and I think that boots into the operating system, if I'm not wrong. I have seen that somewhere in, uh, in a video that someone was doing. And from the operating system again, you can restart the AGS and have the menu or anything. Or ignore it uh, completely and use iGame. <laughs> I'm not saying that because I develop it, but that's a solution. Now, I don't know how the WSD load games are working with the Pi Store. My plan for this system is not to, to become a, a gaming machine, but uh, for sure I'm going to, to try it at some point. OP says I'm using a game on 3.2.2. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks for that. I hope you downloaded the latest version because it had, uh, I did a lot of changes and the the speed on loading increased dramatically. So uh, if you if you see that a little bit slow, the latest version is um, 2.4.6. So make sure you you are using that one. It's a great one, and more are coming. If you I don't know if you checked the video that I did uh, last week, and I presented some ideas and things that I'm having in uh, development, you will see things are coming for the iGame. Amiga fonts. I believe we are close to, to have that uh, installation finished. So, uh, what would you like to do to, to, to see in the next uh, streams about the Python? Um, I'm, not, I'm sure you know that I have done uh, a few uh, streams about how to use Amiga 3.2, how to set it up, how to make it look uh, beautiful and things like that. Um, would you like to see different software, how it works? Maybe internet, streaming, uh, music or uh, uh, video if it is possible. I think there is an application that uh, is able to stream from uh, YouTube. Maybe I could uh, test that. Uh, anything specific that you would like to have a look and see how it works? Now I wonder about the uh, MMU libraries, if I need specific for the system or the generic are going to be fine. We will see. OP says I'm using 3.2 on the Terminal Fire 1260 because I think 3.2 is a bit easier to use and I like the LHA front I'm using on it. Cool. Which one are you using for the LHA? Yeah, for me the 3.2 is the best Amiga OS 3.x because it has uh, a lot of fixes. Uh, on problems, uh, you don't need so many patches into the system and also has a lot of stuff that were coming with Amiga OS 3.9 
which was my previous uh, system that I always install on my Amigas. Backdrops. Uh, Cito says maybe compatibility checking demo games uh, deep paint. What's that? <laughs> Amiga Island says uh, it would be interesting to see how compatible uh, different use cases are. Example, demos, games, applications. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, SLD Snake says plus one compatibility testing. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's something that I would like to see. So if you have um, ideas on things that are... Um, weird in a way that they could work well or not because okay if i go and run something that we all know how good it works it doesn't make any sense so um my concern what i will do in one of the next uh, sprint uh, sorry streams is uh, installation of rtg to see how we can do it uh, in uh, this system. Um, installation of internet, we are going to, to have some solution there. I'm planning to have a, um, a solution for the PCMCIA. And uh, yeah, compatibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's for me also crucial. Um, Falcon says about I game. How to add some additional infos about game, I mean like year, etc. It's needed uh, make new one CVS config file. Uh, no, there, are, there is a package in uh, the Turan FTP that has some files uh, named igame.data and if you have those files inside your uh, games, and uh, they scan your repository, all the files, all the games. The i game, the latest versions, are going to recognize them and will uh, automatically give uh, the right uh, title to your game, the year, and all the information, uh, the chipset that is used, and all the stuff, and also the genre of the of the game. And all the stuff we are going uh, are going to be populated in uh, iGame. Uh, if you check the previous stream that I did, I explained exactly about these files and how they are working because you can use it for games that are not uh, WSD load uh, based. Uh, and you can create your own files, which means that if you have a collection of games that are not WSD load, but you create those files inside the fol their folders uh, and scan this uh, folder uh, you are going to have them automatically added into your list and whenever later you want to redo that it's going to be already there which is for me it's quite useful uh, OP says that uh, I'm using Unpacker okay it uh, makes so it uh, just uh, double click on the the icon and uh, it's uh, it unpacks it on the cell yeah 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 cool that's great yeah um i think the um, director ops for also has a way to to unpack it quite easily but i don't remember i think it relies on the lha um executable glow icons Uh, SLD Snake says, I think that the compatibility results are achieved between the MU68K firmware and WSD load. I mean, the ADF Gotek plus Gotek, like an original floppy, can lead to some glitches. Maybe it's an interesting test to do and compare. Okay, noted. I'm going to, to have a look on that. C2 says, state of the art, deluxe paint, brilliance. Light wave speed testing would be interesting too. Light wave, eh? Hmm. If we have the light wave for 
uh, the RTG, there are, uh, we are going to have some issues because Lightwave has only cyber graphics uh, drivers, if I recall correct. So if we need to use it with Picasso, because the RTG can be driven with Picasso, I don't believe we can install cyber graphics on PyStore, then we will need a mode promotion to have it working. Uh, Falcon11 says, thanks, I will uh, check in your previous stream. Yeah, yeah, please have a look on that. Uh, proceed, okay, yeah. Uh, this system is running from 32 bit, okay. Installation. Now, uh, if I recall correct, okay, yeah. Cancel. If I recall correct, we need to inst to run it again and install the MMU. I have some time uh, some time passed since I last installed uh, 3.2, so I need to recall everything. P96 for Python says Falcon. Yeah, have you uh, the guides that I have seen? Um, says to proposes to to use the uh, Picasso that is freely available on Aminet. Have you tried the the one that comes from the individual computers? Because uh, I might use that one and I don't know if it has uh, any issues. I guess no, but So it has installed Glow icons. We did that. Install CPU support libraries. Proceed. Available MMU libraries is this version. You release. Okay, is this correct? Yes. Proceed. Oh, okay. Yeah, it needs the MMU libs. Now, other. I guess it's a con do you know the answer on this? I guess it's, we need to choose other to get the generic libraries because our system is not one of the others. So I'm going to go with other. Falcon Lever says not yet on PyStorm, only for my B Vision. Yes. Okay. Cool. Let's go with other and see how it goes. Does it make sense, do you think, to, to configure PyStorm to support, to work as a 68030? Do you think that uh, this would give more speed and better compatibility? Has anyone tried that? Would it make sense to, to try it? The installation of MMU libraries version 46.21 is now complete. Okay, so what we need to do is proceed, remove this from all, for, select the proceed gadget to reboot your machine. Okay, let me remove everything. I think this is removed now. Let me check. No. Reject. Okay. Proceed. And logically, it should boot from the hard disk right now. Let's see. Oh, no, it will not because we didn't enable to be bootable. I forgot about that. Let's boot again from the installation disk and let's make that partition bootable. And then I guess it's going to be a great machine to play with, right?
But uh, this is, um, I was thinking that uh, having all this uh, power on your Amigas, it's, it's an awesome thing if you consider this, because um, people uh, had to do a lot of tricks just to, to implement something on low-end machines and uh, having a lot of power and if more and more uh, users are having this kind of uh, systems I guess it would uh, help even further uh, development on newer stuff for example uh, if you have if all the users are having uh, underpowered systems you are not going to implement uh, develop or port uh, a proper video player right or work on uh, harder stuff in um, uh, the browser or something like that but if most of the people are using uh, systems like this one which are quite powerful i hope that more development is going to come into these uh, systems and that will help uh, a lot in my opinion for example, I'm developing the, I'm maintaining the iGame to, to keep it, uh, use as less resources as possible, it's quite hard uh, because you need to add features and when you add features you need to, to make it uh, require more resources, right? Um, to keep a, a balance uh, for that is sometimes quite difficult. So let me change again the VRCM plus SDHC. And here let me do that zero. Like that, save. Great. Partition and make it to double. Okay. Save changes, exit. And now if we remove the disk. Let's reboot. OP says, how was it I games needed an O20? Just thinking of my 500 will, with a split fire, split fire card. Um, I game doesn't need an O20. You can run it just fine on uh, 6800. Uh, sorry, 68,000. Uh, um, but some libraries for the Magic User Interface require O20 unless if you go to Aminet and find older versions that uh, work perfectly on uh, 68,000. You uh, that way it's going to to work fine. So we booted first time on Amiga OS 3.2 with the Python and seems quite fast <laughs> I would say let me see if I can increase high res how this would work okay how about 256 nice Let's save it. Now, uh, I don't know how it comes to your uh, screen. I think it's pretty clear. You see, because this is a flicker fixer and scan doubler, that uh, doesn't uh, flicker, so it's, it's working fine. And it looks much better. Of course, we can make it even better. But I guess this is going to be 
a topic for another uh, stream so guys that's all for for today um, I hope this stream is was uh, useful for you and interesting um, OP says I'm using tiny launcher on it now yeah tiny launcher is very nice uh, launcher as well of course iGame has a lot more um, features but if you can live without them tiny launcher is great uh, yeah uh, we have Amigos 3.2 on PyStorm installed we set up the PyStorm from the scratch we have a terrible screen <laughs> but it works quite well thank you Irla for being here thank you SLD Snake Falcon 11 OP thank you very much for being here C2 thanks a lot um, who I forgot the Iris Amiga thank you very much for being here uh, Smart Cooks uh, thanks a lot for uh, coming into the stream FF Shock you didn't speak on the chat but thank you that you are here or I missed your, your uh, message sorry about that uh, Amiga Live thank you thank you very much for being here uh, thanks everyone for coming um, the PyStorm is working great it is easy to, to set it up um, it's uh, fast it seems fast I don't know how compatible it is we are going to find out in this uh, stream I'm going to test anything you propose uh, so if you uh, want to propose anything please let me know uh, you can find my contacts I have them in the screen at the bottom uh, at that point I would like um, to uh, thank all my supporters on the coffee uh, website that I that I have um, if you want to to follow my work and uh, what I am doing uh, for the Amiga and uh, all the stuff that I'm developing you can go to the coffee page because I have there um, I do blog posts about what I am implementing or what I have in my mind to implement for the future and uh, you will find a lot of uh, information there uh, all this stuff are uh, free but of course uh, for my monthly supporters who uh, support me every month with uh, donations there are some uh, perks uh, only for them uh, and if you want to have access there please have a, a th please think about uh, supporting me with a monthly donation um, those videos uh, for the stream are going to be exclusively um, uh, accessed for the monthly supporters of mine for two weeks and then I'm going to upload them uh, on YouTube for everyone to, to watch um, I would like to thank my uh, monthly supporters who are uh, Breed, Christopher White Daniel Trixie Zetlika, Emek, Livelord and Tim Grooms. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. I hope that these streams are useful and uh, something uh, from you can get something from them and uh, find a way to, to do what we are doing here. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me and uh, see you on the next stream next week. Bye bye.